In this video, I'd like to go over a workflow that should be nice and simple and fast, and that will bring out bright, vibrant colors and good contrast from an image like this one that is pretty dull and boring to begin with. So to begin with, let me open this with Adobe Camera Raw. Here inside Bridge, I just click on the little aperture looking icon and that brings it up. The first thing you'll notice here is that the tones in this photo are primarily in the center of the histogram. That means a couple of different things. One is that I didn't expose it properly. I should have exposed it a little bit more towards the right here. But it also means that there aren't any uh, highlights in the photo. Everything is in the midtones and there's very little in the way of shadows. Um, one of the things that I could do is use either the curves here um, to correct it or some of the other settings, but what I'm actually going to do is just open this up in Photoshop after I've checked the white balance. And by looking at the RGB values here and using my dropper tool over something like this cloud, which should be neutral, you'll see that those numbers are all pretty much equal, which means that this value really is neutral and the white balance is correct. So I'm just going to go ahead and open this. Okay, now that this image is open inside of Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and create an adjustment layer. In this case, there are a couple of different things that I can do to spread out those tones across the entire histogram. I'm going to use a curves adjustment layer in this case because it's the most flexible option. The first thing that I'm going to do is take a look at the histogram here and see where the brightest tones are in the photo. And you can just see them right here. And there isn't, isn't much there. But I will move my white slider down until it matches up with that brightest tone. And then I'll do the same thing with the black slider. Here I can actually see that there's some shadow detail right in here, but I'm going to clip that because it's not a significant amount of data. There, I think that looks okay. And I can come back and change this layer later <clears throat> because this is an adjustment layer. I'm not making permanent changes. All right, the next thing that I'm going to do is darken this sky up. I want to get these blues really nice and dark in comparison to the clouds. And to do that, I'm going to duplicate this background layer. And there are a couple of different ways to do that. In this case, I'm just going to drag it onto the new layer icon. I could also have pressed Control J. Now, to get these tones darker, I'm going to change the blending mode for this new layer to multiply. Now you can see that these tones are quite dark, but they're dark across the entire image, and I only wanted them dark in the sky. So what I'll do is add a layer mask, and then I'm going to use my gradient tool, starting with black and going to white on the layer mask to mask off this portion of the image. And there you can see the black area masks the bottom part of this image from affecting the layer below it. Now, of course, this is too too dark, but I can 
<coughs> make that look better by lowering the opacity. And I'll bring that down to 45, 46%. That looks about right to me. With these whites multiplied, though, what I'm going to do is come back up here to my curves adjustment layer and make some changes here to increase the contrast. I'm going to raise up the bright side and then just lower down the dark end a little bit. And at this point you can see already that the sky is nice and contrasty. The colors in the foreground here are pretty saturated, um, and it's a much, much more pleasing photo than we started with. The last thing that I'm going to do with this photo is, if you take a look in here, the tones are actually a little bit turquoise. Uh, they have a little more green in them than I'd like, so I'm going to create another adjustment layer, in this case, hue saturation. I'm going to set this to the <coughs> blues channel, and also sample some of these colors, so that I make sure that I am going to be affecting only the blues, but all of the blues. I've sampled some of the dark and some of the light blues in this sky. Now, zoom back out a little bit. With those tones selected, you'll see that if I change the hue, it changes all of those hues in the sky. But what I wanted to actually do was just slide this a little bit to the right, which is blue. And there at about five, these uh, tones in the sky are nice and blue, and these are more of a medium blue as well. Now, that is finished. That, that looks just fine to me. What I'm going to do is group these layers that I have uh, created here. I've selected all three of those in my um, layers palette. And I'm going to make a group out of them. Now, by clicking on the group visibility, I can compare this image to what we started with which is that. So just these few changes that we've made, a couple of adjustment layers, we went from a really boring photo like this to something that's really pretty attractive.